Well, good evening, this is Hound Dog Steve coming to you on the 26th of November. And here we are. Take away your kid's smartphone. Okay, so this is going to be a tech news report. And uh, an hour before bedtime, seriously, those things are bad news in all kinds of ways. Okay, so this is an article that's taken from the Canadian Medical Association Journal and it warns that kids are getting less sleep than ever before and this is important because sleep deprivation causes a whole host of problems and many of the sleeplessness is, or much of the sleeplessness is caused by kids playing with their phones last thing at night are actually in bed. If they can sneak that phone in the bed, they're playing games, they're texting friends, and this is exciting the brain. But uh, here is why it's a problem. So here's uh, Professor Gruber on newswire.ca. On that subject, sleep deprivation is linked to obesity, diabetes, hypertension, metabolic, uh, metabolic syndrome, and cardio cardiovascular problems. In addition, poor sleep has been shown to impair academic performance, learning, memory, and functions essential for academic success. Moreover, inadequate sleep interferes with mood and affects mood regulation. That seems clear. A sleep issue raised in the CMAJ article is only one of the problems associated with too much screen time. There are many articles about how too much screen time is really bad for children and lately dozens more about how the moguls of Silicon Valley are raising their kids tech free. That's right. The people who develop addictive games, apps and all the rest of it steer clear when it comes to their own kids. And this is worrisome. Uh, here is another article. Uh, Phone use in schools. Smart? Answer, wrong. Uh, this is by a, um, a teacher, a guest uh, columnist. Today, a growing number of schools have fallen prey to the belief that the theoretical possibility that a student might, on occasion, use a smartphone for an academic-related function. And, um, and, of course, he goes on to say that teachers are using the phone in the classroom which sets an absolutely awful example and um, you know if you want your kids to pay attention then you have to pay attention and it's funny that you should mention that because uh, I have a friend who is a teacher and she went to a teachers conference and uh, she said there's sitting there there's probably about two three hundred teachers in the room and as soon as the conference began about 75% of the teachers got out of their phones and started texting and fiddling around and scrolling. Uh, so this is addictive across the board and I think that because the execs and moguls of high-tech companies are keeping their kids away from this kind of stuff is a really, this, this is your first line indication that there's something seriously wrong with this technology. Anyway, my next story is about some of the data that's being collected on um, you from these big corporations. And this is just what we know about. And this is from Zero Hedge. And let's go take a look at that right now. And uh, I'll come back and we'll wrap up. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Zero Hedge, visualizing what the big tech companies know about you. The novelty of the internet platform boom has mostly worn off. And as visual capitalists, Jeff Desjardins notes, now that companies like Facebook, Amazon and Alphabet are among the world's most valued companies, people are starting to hold them more accountable for the impact of their actions on the real world. From the Cambridge Analytica scandal to the transparency of Apple's supply chain, it's clear that big tech companies are under higher scrutiny. And surprisingly, much of this concern stems around one key currency that tech companies leverage for their own profitability personal data. What Big Tech Knows Today's infographic comes to us from Security Baron and it compares and contrasts the data that big tech companies admit to collecting in their privacy policies. Okay, and uh, you see all of the you know, Microsoft here, Amazon, Twitter, Apple, Facebook, Google. All the way down to the bottom. 
So what do we have here? Name, gender, birthday, phone number, email address, location, relationship status, work, income level, education, race, ethnicity, religious views, physical address, facial recognition data, Facebook and Microsoft, political views, Facebook, credit cards, government IDs, IP addresses, your emails, your contacts, your phone calls, your chat conversations or messages, calendar events, search history, watched videos, websites visited, browser information, video uploaded, photo uploads, status, updates, posts, likes, your documents, your purchase history, your games, your books, your music, your fitness health data, ads you click, what you've hidden from newsfeed, devices you use, information about the things near your device, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc., voice data, and gaming interactive data. Did I opt into this? The majority of data categories on the list makes sense. It's a no-brainer that Amazon has your credit card information or that Google knows that websites you visit. Even the least tech-savvy person would likely understand this. However, there are definitely some categories of data that get collected and stored that may sound unnerving to some people. Facebook knows your political views, religious views, even your ethnicity. Xbox users will have their skeletal tracking data collected through the Connect device. Facebook also knows your income level, which it finds out through partnerships with personal data brokers. Platforms collect your documents, email and message data, though some of this is just metadata. Facebook and Microsoft store facial recognition data based on the pictures you upload. Remember, this is just what companies admit to collecting in their private policies. What else do you think they know about you? So my friends, be careful what you do on the internet. Uh, my rule of thumb is, uh, would I show this to my grandma? And if the answer is no, I probably shouldn't be doing it. Well, I think you can see that uh, we need to be absolutely judicious in our use of cell phones and the internet and be aware of what is going on here. Uh, I think that it's absolutely unconscionable that these companies are gathering all of this data. It really is none of their business what I put in my emails and my emails should be protected by federal law as my real mail is. When you post a letter, tampering with the uh, Royal Mail is a federal offence and tampering with your emails should be a federal offence. We have a right to privacy in this country and uh, what we write to our friends, neighbours and relatives is absolutely none of the government's business and it is none of these corporations' business. And of course, with all of this tracking that's going on, uh, I did a story a little while back and uh, I may do a re-work a re, uh, of this story because we've had some much more uh, damning information out of China about this social credit party and how that gathering of information on every citizen in that country is geared to a point system where you can get uh, fast-tracked onto booking tickets, uh, hotel rooms, um, uh, vacations, this kind of stuff, borrowing money, buying houses, buying property, starting businesses. However, if you get less points uh, or your point score average drops, then you start to lose those privileges. And so say, for example, you know, the government says, uh, OK, it's flu season. Time to take your flu shot. And you say, well, I don't think I like that because there's thysimeral in that and there's an egg adjuvant and there's all kinds of things, the mercury, you know, which is a cumulative poison that I don't think I want to have in my body. Whoops. Brrr, your credit score goes down. And guess what? You can't open a bank account. Uh, this is absolutely insidious. We must pay attention to this because it is a creeping sickness. Uh, Article uh, 16 has just passed in Europe and that is basically making everything copyrighted material. 
So any video that I would do in Europe, that if I want to have it play in Europe, if I take it, well, I would, it wouldn't be allowed. This video would not be allowed because I'm showing you clips of a newspaper and according to Article 16, those clips have copyright and I am not allowed to use them even though in America and the rest of the world we see it as fair use. It's already in the public. Okay, and if it's already in the public, you can use it. It's out there. It's open for your use. Okay, so... Uh, that's about it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed those stories. If you did, please like and subscribe below and leave a comment if you so desire. We'd love to hear what you've got to say. And uh, you take care. Have a great week. And we'll be talking to you real soon. See you now. Bye.